We want to welcome you who are watching by television to Word of Life Church, home of the Mission Cathedral, where people find freedom and victory in Christ. Here's the joke of the day. Two guys were playing golf. One of them was about to swing his golf club when all of a sudden he noticed a funeral procession going down the street. Immediately, he stopped mid-swing, closed his eyes, took off his hat, and had a moment of silence. After it was over, his friend looked at him and said, Wow, that was one of the most beautiful, respectful things I've ever seen a golfer do. The golfer says, Well, you know, my mother-in-law wasn't so bad. All right, how many of you all brought your Bibles? Lift them up real high, make Jesus glad and the devil mad. Say this, say, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I have. I boldly declare that my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and my cell phone is off in Jesus' name. Turn to someone right next to you, look him straight in the eye and say, did you hear that, child of God? I will never, ever, ever be the same again. Well, God bless you. You look wonderful today, if you would. Open up your Bibles to Galatians chapter 2. The book of Galatians chapter 2. And now, Father, give me the grace to teach this message as I ought to, to all the hundreds here, the thousands more watching by television and online. We believe, Father God, that you're going to have your will and your way today. Now open up the people's hearts to be free from those who are trying to manipulate them, and we honor you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. This matter arose because some false brothers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. We did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might remain with you. I want to talk to you today about stopping people from manipulating and trying to control you. There's a lot of manipulators out there who's going to try to make you their slaves, who, who's going to try to get you to, to hearken to their beck and calling. They're, they're going to they're gonna, uh, put such pressure on you but it's not a godly pressure. It's not a good leader who's trying to guide people, but rather a manipulator is one who uses their position to put pressure on another so that the person loses something of themselves, loses a calling, some, some, some anointing that's in their life. And there are a lot of manipulators out there. And how many of y'all know uh, manipulators are a dime a dozen? They're all over. The, they, they're at work. They're at our home. They're at churches, they're in our government, there are people who, are, who will try to manipulate you. And I want to talk about stopping manipulators from controlling you. Now let me start off by saying, control can be good. Control simply means order. You know, there has to be some sort of control in a church if there's going to be order. Without control, it's chaotic. Our government has to have control. In fact, Paul said in Romans chapter 13, God instituted government as his servants to bring judgment on the wrongdoers. So there has to be control, all right? There has to be control in the family, has to be control at the workplace. So control is, there's nothing wrong with control because there's some people who just hate control. Uh, and to them, everyone's a manipulator. You know, my dad's a manipulator because he, he makes me get a job before he buys me a car. What kind of dad is that? The bishop's a manipulator. He tells me when I'm doing wrong. Well, are you doing wrong? Yes, but who is he to tell? See, <clears throat> so, so there are people who are just rebellious. All right? So someone who's rebellious in their heart, they actually might twist this sermon in order to cause them to even be more rebellious. I'm not talking about being rebellious, but there are, there's the opposite side of the coin where a person will actually manipulate you to control your life and make you a slave. And Paul said, and he's speaking of these manipulators who twisted the gospel, who told the Gentiles they had to be circumcised, who told them there's a list of rules or you can't really be part of the church unless you fulfill these rules. And Paul says, we did not give in to them but for one moment 
Now, you know how you stop people from controlling you? Are you ready? You stop giving in to them. Thank you for that amen. You have to put a stop to it. They have to see your strength. I was reading psychology today, and they mentioned that manipulators, they look for the weakest person. They look for the weak. That's just like the devil. The Bible describes Satan as a roaring lion. If you know something about roaring lions, uh, lions... They, they, they don't want to extend too much, expend too much energy going after strong animals, fast animals. Instead, they look for the sick animals, the weak, the maimed, the one that has a broken foot. They're looking for someone who's weak to devour. Now, listen to me. Manipulators can spot out, they can sniff out weak people. And they will go after the weak. What's the weak? Someone who's guilt-ridden, someone who's very fearful, intimidated, who doesn't know who they are in Christ, who's willing to do anything to make peace. Listen, God has called us to be peacemakers, not peacekeepers. All right, all right. What's a peacemaker? And a, you know, nowhere in the Bible does it say, blessed are the peacekeepers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Makers means they see no peace, but they make it. Peacekeepers see no peace, but they pretend there's peace. Because they don't want to get anyone upset even further. See, they don't want to confront injustice. They're thinking about their own security. That's a peacekeeper. God's called us to be peacemakers. There's a difference. Controllers, they're looking for the weak. And they go after the weak, and then they use their own weakness against them. The weakness may be a guilt, so they'll try to make them feel more guilty. It could be a fear that make them feel more fearful. It could be insecurities that make them feel even more insecure about themselves. And they go attacking their very weakness and use it against them. You say, how do, how do you stop it? It's real simple. You've got to be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. See, when you're strong, the roaring lion, it leaves you alone because they know not to pick on you. And you know, Charlie Brown, everybody's always picking on me. Remember that song? And we got a lot of Charlie Browns here. Come on. And you know Charlie Brown? He, he's a clown, you know. Yeah. Why is everybody picking on me? i tell you why you're, everybody's picking on you, Charlie Brown. Because you're a wimp. Wake, you're, you're, you're too weak. And people see that. That's why there has to be some strong strength inside of your spirit. Knowing who you are in Christ. Knowing that you have only one person that has the right to completely control you. And that's God. That's it. He's the sovereign one. He's it. And other people you will respect and honor, and especially their positions of authority, you will submit as far as you can, but you understand no one has the right to manipulate you, pull your strings to make you a puppet. And Paul explained why people didn't get away with it in the, in, uh, the churches. He says they tried, but his answer was, we didn't give in to them. We didn't give in. Listen to me. That's what people do. The weak give in to controllers. Okay. Because they just want peace, even if injustice is taking place. Just peace. Peace at any cost. Listen to me. You, this is not what God's called us to do. Paul says we did not give in to them. We put our foot down, and we were not going to submit to their lies and their deception that they wanted really people to submit to them. We didn't give in to them. See, so controllers, they're looking for the weak. And, and if you let them control you, they'll stop you from fulfilling your call in God. They'll, they'll, they'll stop personal relationships that you have with people. They'll put their foot down and say, no, no, if you're friends with her, you're not going to be a friend of mine. And yet that's a godly friend. I'm not talking about, you know, hanging around the wrong people, but good people, family members. They're trying to separate. I, I heard one story where a, 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 a lady hadn't seen her 
daughter because the father has kept her illegally from keep seeing them. This, this is wrong. You've got to put your foot down and say, no, no, we're not going to have that. That's not right, and we're not going to put up with it. So, so controllers, though, they're looking for people that like to give in to, make, to keep peace when there is no peace. We're to be peacemakers, but peacemakers don't compromise truth and, and, and fairness. And what controllers will do, they'll cause you to not depend on God, and you start to depend on them for self-esteem, for good feelings, for, for security, instead of depending on the Lord. So all of this... Uh, I, I, uh, Controllers can be spouses, children. Yeah, you know, how many of y'all know there's a few kids that are controllers? Controllers can be found with in-laws and outlaws. <laughs> controllers can be ministers and members. It could be your boss. Yeah, yeah. And employees. Oh. It could be friends, boyfriends, and girlfriends. It could be law enforcement, citizens, special interest groups. Listen to me. You find controllers in every, every realm of life. And you have to not give in to them. Because if you give in to them, then they'll have more control over you. And psychology today said once they know the weakness, they'll use it against you. And then they try to get you to give up something of yourself to be able to control you. Some self-esteem, some sense of security, money, whatever it is, they're trying to let you, get you to give up something. And then here's what controllers do. Once they see it works, they'll just keep repeating the pattern all over again. They just keep doing it over and over and over again because it works. But you've got to do what Paul said. We did not give in to them for one moment. Not even one moment. I'm not going to give them a minute, uh, 30 seconds of satisfaction. Because even if it's 30 seconds of controlling you, they might try it again. Maybe they'll try to make it a minute of control. But Paul says we didn't give in to them for even one moment. There wasn't a second that they thought we gave in to them. And when controllers see that, that they cannot even get a second of control, you know what controllers do? They will leave you alone. And they'll not even bother to try to control you because they've learned their lesson. They know it doesn't work. So if you're being controlled, now listen, if you're being controlled, it's partly your fault. Thank you for that amen. Because you're letting it happen. It's your fault. you chosen to be weak. And if you want to be weak, then guess what you're going to get? A lot of controllers controlling your life. But if you choose to be strong and say, no, I'm not going to let that happen, then you'll be strong. I, I, I notice in the, in the New Testament, there's a lot of warnings against abuse of authority. Jesus gave a lengthy teaching about his, to his disciples saying, don't you ever lead like the kings lead, where they get all the benefits and the money. He said, no, you are to be their servant. The greatest should be the least. Even St. Peter, he writes and says, and he was the uh, chief apostle, right? And he says, that he wrote to the shepherds and he says, do not lord your authority over the flock, but treat them and understand you have a great shepherd that's over you. Notice the emphasis. Peter even wrote to husbands. He says, husbands, do not be harsh with your wives. He told fathers, do not exasperate your children. And then in his day, there were slavery. Paul spoke against slavery in 1 Corinthians 7. But while the institution still existed, he wrote to the masters and said, Masters, do not threaten your slaves. And, and I noticed this in the New Testament. Such a warning about manipulation. Using all sorts of tactics to try to get control over people under you. So when I saw this, I, I began to realize more and more that, that one of the great problems, yes, one of the problems is rebellion. Some people are just plain rebellious. They will not listen and submit to anyone. They won't submit to the government. They won't submit to the law. They'll resist arrest. They'll fight 
ministers, they, they just are bitter and angry and rebellious. But for a large part, I think the majority are not that way. But they will allow people to control them. Now, how, how will the devil use people to control your life, to manipulate you? Well, there are five basic ways he, he uses, uh, five tactics that he uses. Uh, one is emotional manipulation. Can you all say emotion? Now, almost all of us, to a certain degree, have used this type of emotion, uh, uh, manipulation on people. I doubt if anyone has ever been guiltless. We've all used some form of emotional manipulation to get our way. So I bring this up because this message is not just for those who are the controlee, but it could be a good message for the controller to recognize, wait a minute, I'm abusing my position. I'm, I'm misusing it. So one way of manipulation is emotion. I suppose the most common emotion that is used is tears. <laughs> Maybe your, your son just got married. And now they're, they got to decide where they're going to spend Christmas the first year. So, so, so your, your son comes up to you and says, Mama, uh, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and spend Christmas with my wife first. <gasps> oh, me, Oh, what's wrong? You don't love your mama. No, no, I love you. We'll, we'll, we'll come back next, next year. We'll spend it. Yeah, but why do they get it first? <laughs> come on, tears. I suppose we use it the most because that's how we, we learn as kids. We cried when we didn't get our way. Now, that's fine if you're a baby. All right? But when you're you know, 25 years old and still crying, we need to take the bottle away from you. Because something's wrong now. And so some people use tears to elicit guilt. You don't love me. You don't want to be with me. <laughs> now I have a confession to make. When Sonia and I were first married, we, we saw immediately how we manipulate. She used tears and I used anger. But we had to learn. I had to learn. No, 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 Sonia, you're not going to get your way by crying. I love you. And see, because you feel so bad. I don't want her. I love her. I don't want her to feel bad. And see, you're, you're, but wait a minute. Now, it's one thing to feel, you know, some people just cry because they just, it's, they're not trying to manipulate. We, we comfort them. But sometimes tears can be used for manipulation. And Sonia had to learn my anger was not a, she couldn't give in to that. Or otherwise, I'm going to keep using it unless God deals with me and says, just stop it. Basically, he, he was dealing with me, just stop it. That's not the right way to do things. You see? Um, but anger is a form of manipulation. And all of this is based on the fear of other people. Another form of manipulation outside of emotion is a manipulation through words. I call it critical manipulation, where a person criticizes you uses words in some way to intimidate you. Psalm 59, verse 7 says it this way. See what they spew from their mouths. They spew out swords from their lips. And they say, who can hear us? Notice what they do. They use their words like swords. They wound you. They hurt you. They'll do things with words. What happens when someone uses swords to hurt you? Are you ready? Here's what you do. You use the sword of the Spirit to fight back. You use the word of the living God. And, and if somebody says, you know, you, you, know, you can't do this, you, you answer back, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. You're not smart enough to do this. No, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says, I have the mind of Christ. I can ask for wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5. And you know what? God's going to give me wisdom, and I'll know how to do it. See, you fight their swords with the sword of the Spirit. And you've got to answer back, at least in your heart and your mind, here's what the Word says, and I'm not going to give in to this. The Word of God's the final answer. And then another form of manipulation is financial manipulation. It could be parents with kids. 
boss with employees, members with pastors. They threaten withholding money. If you don't do what I want, I'm not going to give you my inheritance. I'm not going to do this. You got to give in or they, they're going to withhold some financial help. I remember years ago when our church was quite small, uh, there was one particular man in our church that told me the parts that he doesn't like me preaching. He didn't want me preaching about faith and healing and prosperity, but he didn't mind me preaching on holiness and other things, but don't preach the victorious message. Now, here's how he would do it. Our church was so small, Sonia was the treasurer, and he, was a, he, he had a lot of money, had his own business, and if he liked the sermon, he gave a big offering. Yeah, yeah, true. And then if I preached on faith or healing or victory or prosperity, then he wouldn't give anything. I mean, he got me so mad, I preached more on prosperity than I even wanted to. Just to make him mad. He's not going to manipulate me. <laughs> See, and, and people will use money. And then there's the... One of the worst kinds, this is usually criminal, and that's physical manipulation. Not always criminal, but physical manipulation. That could be abuse. You have, and this is very common where boyfriends or husbands will abuse their girlfriend or wife, hurt them, because they're trying to intimidate them to get their way. Listen to me, sister. Don't put up with anyone who treats you like a punching bag. You're a human being made in the image of God. But physical manipulation could be, it could be uh, uh, someone saying, I'm not going to let you see your grandchildren unless you give in to me. That's wrong. Now, that's not a crime. You can do that, get away with it. But it's still wrong. But people are afraid. They give in. They'll do anything because they don't want to lose that relationship. Physical manipulation. And then finally, I want to finish off with spiritual manipulation. Oh, this could be the most dangerous of all because it looks so godly. People use the Bible. But here's what Paul, uh, Peter says in first, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. He says, people distort scriptures. They twist scriptures. They distort the scripture for their own destruction. They're twisting it. Why? Because they know you are a believer in God. So the only thing you're going to listen to is the word. So what do they do? They'll use the word. Well, the Bible says. And they're only using it for their own sake. They're not thinking about how they can build you up by using the word. They twist it. They put pressure on you. Um, that's why I. When someone's using the scriptures on you, you got to stop and say, wait a minute. What does the scriptures really say? Let's, let's open up the Bible. Let's search the scripture. That's why one of my favorite passages is in the, in the book of Acts. I think it's uh, chapter 17 or chapter 18, where it says, The Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they searched the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Don't you love that? They searched it. You got to search script. I don't care if the pope, a pastor, or a priest tells you something. You say, where's that in the Bible?